The amount of messages I've received on this channel about AI are on the rise. People are scared of whether 3D is still a viable route to follow with the coming of AI. And my answer to that question is, abuse it. And that's fun and all, but AI is not yet at its full power, so we can hop onto it quickly. So let's make a very simple render in Blender using AI. Now I'm going over to Leonardo AI. You can create an account right over here and you get 150 credits that you can use to generate images with. I'm just going to launch the app. I already have an account. So right now I'm in Leonardo AI and I'm going to click on image generation. There's a bunch of other tools right here that you can use as well, such as motion, real-time canvas, you name it. Play around with this if you like. We're not going to do that in this tutorial. I'm going to click on this and right here we get a bar that you can select and make some changes to. So you can select 1024 by 1024, but it will cost more of your coins. So right here you always have 150 coins each each day that you can use to type prompts and generate images. So type a prompt. I'm going to use the Absolute Reality V 1.6 model. You can also use Dream Shaper V7 or Leonardo Diffusion XL if you would like. I'm going to use Absolute Reality. So right here we can type a prompt. As you can see, I've already generated some kitchens and I'm going to generate a kitchen with dark gray tones and white 80 millimeter lens. I'm just going to press on enter and it will generate some images for us. All right, so what we've got here is an image that I think suits our scene. So if I look at this, we want the background to be flat like this because otherwise it will not work if you change the perspective. So I'm going to select the images that I think look good enough to use in order for us to get the right result in our render. So I'm going to download this one and maybe this one as well. Gonna generate some more images, but first I'm going to show you how to uprest this because this image dimension is in 640 by 832, which is a very weird dimension, but it has something to do with how the model is trained. I'm not going to dive too deep into that right now, but what we can do is click on Leonardo AI once again. Then right over here you have Universal Upscaler and you can add images to your upscaler. So what I'm going to do is simply select an image right over here and now we've got a source image right over here. Upscale, it will cost 30 of those coins so do keep in mind that if you want a higher quality for this it's going to cost you and maybe you have to do this in two days if you make some mistakes. And as a matter of fact what you can also do go over here AI upscale and then you have free image upscalers that you can use and upscale by 400 percent entirely for free just drag and drop your image in here so you don't even have to spend any coins on leonardo ai but i just want to show you this so upscale and we can select this image don't change this just upscale it all right so we get a slider right here so you can see what the quality change entails so right here we barely have any detail but as soon as you slide it over it's starting to look a bit better. Now all we have to do is go over here and click on download the upscaled image and it will download it with the name Universal Upscaler. So I'm going to do that for a couple more images and then I'll see you back in Blender. I recommend you do the same and let's say we do about five to ten different of these images okay. So I'll see you back in Blender in no time. So right here I've got a couple of AI images that I'm going to use to replace this background with and we're going to animate the camera forward. So this is our Blender scene and I am going to remove this for now just by pressing on H. Then I will select all of this right over here like so and it doesn't matter that we've got the gobo selected as well i'm going to place this in a collection background go all the way down let's see if we got everything so alt h and now we've got our original cube back it's right over here i'm going to call it house then i'm going to duplicate this and call it house backup and i will remove the backup house and then go to the camera view select the house take this plane and delete the faces. So now we still have approximately the same lighting setup. Our HDRI is kind of flowing in from that side, but we're going to fix that simply by bringing in Shift A, image, images as planes. I'm going to bring in this one first, scale it up, G and Y, bring it over there. And now we've got a kitchen right over there. This is the universal upscaler. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn the background back on. And I will also turn on the house back up instead of the normal house because we need to animate the camera first. Let's go over to the camera, Shift S, cursor to select it, Shift A, curve, path, and now we've got a path right over there, and it's not very visible, but it's right over there. So RZ90, and I'm going to drag this outwards, E on the Y axis, then I'm going to select this camera, go over to the constraints tab right over here, select follow path from the menu, and select the path we've created. Now the camera will be on some funky place, so press on N, Go over to item, location to zero. And now it should be on the utmost length of the path right over there. And if we offset this, the camera will move on this path. Now, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to add another constraint called the track two constraint. Select the blender right over here with the camera. And now the camera should always be focused on our blender. Let's take this, let's bring this backwards just a little bit. So we have some more space for the camera to move in. Then I'm going to drag this upwards, go over to the timeline, timeline. First frame, press on I right over here and go to frame, let's say 100. Let's make it five seconds, 100 and move 
the camera forward all the way over here. Something like this. And now we've got a pretty cool looking camera motion. I'm going to make it linear, like so. Press T and select linear. And now the camera is moving forward in our beautiful looking scene. We want to calculate the amount of frames that we have according to the amount of pictures. So I have eight pictures and there's this original render as well. 100 divided by nine, which is 11. So we need 11 frames to render for each of these images. So I'm going to do that for this one and I'm going to swap it out for the AI picture and I will show you what I mean. All right, and now it's very simple. We are going to take our background that we've got right over here. I've just finished the render from one to 11. I'm going to take the background, I'm going to turn it off right over here and I will turn on the AI image. And this will give us a different background. I'm going to do it from frame 11 to frame 22. And right over here, it will look like this. So now we've got a different background. And the name of the game is we are going to repeat this over and over until we've got the entire 100 frames filled. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that each and every time. One thing I would like to show you is to go over into the image and then swap it out for another image. So that's the way to do it. You can simply swap out the image in the shader editor, render it out. Now I've given you everything that you need. I'm certain you can figure this out for yourself on how to finish this render all the way to the end. So basically it's just swapping images so we have a different background each time the camera moves forward. You see, was that so despicable? Of course, AI is not perfect and a lot of people overplay the use cases at this point in time, but I'm sure that in the future it will play a bigger role in society. My personal strategy is to pick up some small bits of information here and there about AI, but not jump into it like a fool madman and just wasting my time on some useless programs that people are just making and pumping out right now. You don't want to be one of those guys spending all their time on the new developments in AI and this program is going to be the new future and then next year it's gone. Oh wow, a new shiny object. Wah wah wah. Don't be like this. Be smart and assess the value of your time. Use what's useful and discard whatever is not, which you are already doing by following this course. But that being said, if you want the ultimate non-AI lighting solution, then I highly recommend checking out my Gumroad and afterwards watch this video next.